course, the health crisis has provoked the financial crisis. Wall Street ended the trading week with another steep sell-off on Friday. At the close, the Dow had lost more than 900 points. The S&P 500 and NASDAQ also fell sharply. That helped make last week the worst in U.S. markets since 2008, with the Dow losing 17 percent of its value. And that's just some of the economic fallout we are seeing right now, including massive layoffs and predictions of an unprecedented slowdown. CBS News senior business analyst Jill Schlesinger is here to tell us uh, more about what we're facing and how you should handle it. Jill, good morning. Good morning. All right, so uh, the bear market is now down 30 percent, which is about typical for a bear market right now, but obviously a crazy week on Wall Street, Jill. Do you feel like things have settled down at all? Uh, I don't think so, not yet. And I think that we're about to see a lot more volatility. Here's what's going on. If you're a trader and you're seeking guidance about what's happening in the economy, you're a bit flying blind. And until we get more data, these are sort of guesstimates. So let me tell you what economists are telling me. They're looking at the, a recession that has probably already started, with the, and maybe in the middle of this quarter that we're in the first quarter. But if you look at the second quarter of this year, we're looking at analysts who are saying we could have a drop of 25 percent. That's what Goldman Sachs says, 14 percent, J.P. Morgan Chase. To put those numbers in perspective, we haven't seen quarterly drops like that since the Great Depression. We, our worst quarter in 2008 was the last quarter, and that was down 8.9 percent. So the economic uncertainty is breeding the sell-off. And until there's more certainty, I don't think it's going to stop anytime soon. Some of the staggering numbers that we've seen with the economy screeching to a halt, I believe was how you had put it, is the impact on jobs right now and some record numbers and losses. I think the job loss numbers, we are going to see a lot more coming up. So we have one data point that was released on Thursday. That's weekly jobless claims. And they spiked by 33% from the previous week. When we get the next week's results, which will be next Thursday, we are likely to see a million, maybe two million job app, uh, jobless claims applications. Now, when people are looking at the unemployment rate overall, remember, we came into this period at a 50-year low of three and a half percent. It's likely to spike up to six to eight percent, which is pretty hefty. And, and I know it's agonizing for those who are losing their jobs. It may be more than that, but the good news is that most of the economists who have very dark predictions for the first half of the year, they do believe that sometime in the middle of the summer, the economy will pick up and those folks will go back to work. In part, in part Jill, because banks are structurally in, in a better place than they were uh, 12 years ago now. Uh, in 2008, the government spent $700 billion in a bailout. Uh, what, what about that worked and didn't, and, and what do you think the government should be uh, using this $1 trillion plus for right now to help people today and next month? The government has two di different responses. We have the Federal Reserve that's pulled out the break the glass uh, playbook from 2008 and 2009. So the Federal Reserve, all the actions that they are taking are simply to make sure that the nation's financial plumbing remains unclogged. Very important. With this trillion dollar plan, we have got to see money go directly to people who are harmed. There is talk of maybe one to three thousand dollars of checks to families based on the size of the family. This would be about a half, uh, $500 billion. But we're talking about keeping other businesses alive as well. So we want to give direct relief to the people, but we want them to be able to return to a job. So $50 billion for the airline industry, $150 billion to other impacted sectors, and $300 billion to small businesses. Jill, hel helping people individually didn't help. That, that didn't happen 12 years ago, right? We helped the banks. Uh, we helped car yeah. companies. We didn't help people individually. Yeah, we had a plan to help people modify their mortgages, but we did not do enough, and the plan was really laden with so much red tape. We need money in the hands of people. I interviewed a Nobel Prize winning economist this week. He believes that whatever we do must continue, so it can't be a one-time $1,000 check. He says money needs to get to people to help them survive during these times, and we have to get businesses able to withstand this. This is critical. All right, Jill Schlesinger, thank you.